This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today is Memorial Day. It's a day on which we remember and honor those who died in active military service. And on this Memorial Day, I want to take a moment to remember my friend and Citadel classmate, U.S. Marine Lieutenant Daniel Malcolm. He died on November 10, 2004 in Fallujah, Iraq. If you have a few minutes, I'd like you to follow the link in the description below to a BBC News article describing Dan's extraordinary valor and sacrifice. It's my hope that it will help remind all of us why we take this day to honor these men and women. Okay, on to our lock of the day. I thought it might be appropriate to open a military lock today, and this is a U.S. military munitions lock made around 1970 by the Miracle Lock Corporation. The history of this lock is actually really interesting. It starts around 1968, when the U.S. military went shopping for a new lock to secure arms, ammunition, and explosives. Finding nothing secure enough made in the U.S., they ended up ordering locks from Ingersoll in the UK. Fast forward about a year to the end of 1969, the Miracle Lock Company in the US became a franchisee of Ingersoll and started producing this lock. It has a US made lock body and a very clever 10 lever core that was produced in the UK by Ingersoll. Now here's where the history gets a little bit fuzzy. Supposedly, Miracle Lock wasn't paying its bills to Ingersoll, which in turn stopped shipping cores after less than a year of production. At that point, Miracle Lock switched to an Ava core that was produced in Finland. But by 1971, all Miracle Lock stopped being made because their contract with the US government was terminated due to poor quality control. It's because of that that we don't see too many of these locks out there particularly those with the 10 lever Ingersoll core, which was made for less than a year. So now that we know the history, let's see what it takes to pick this open. Now as a munitions lock, you would expect it to be tricky to pick, and that is certainly the case for this one. We have a 10 lever core in here, and they interact with either side of the key. So five levers on one side and five levers on the other. For my personal preference, I like using heavier tension to pick these. And when I do use heavy tension, I need really good access to the levers. Because of that, I'm going to be using two different tension tools today. And I'm going to swap back and forth between my tension position to make sure I have an optimal angle at accessing those levers. I have to say, these Ingersoll 10 lever cores are very, very inconsistent for me. Sometimes I'll open them up in two or three minutes. Other times I will be working on it for a half hour. I'm not entirely sure why some are easy and some are hard, but I can say that these are one of those locks that I can't consistently sit down and be assured that I will open it in, in a relatively short period of time. So nothing on one, nothing on two. Nothing on three, four, or five. It looks like I started on the wrong side, but I'm going to keep the tension up just in case I set something and didn't feel it. And I'll be swapping back and forth several times through this process. Okay, I got a click out of one and a little bit of movement on the core, I think. Nothing on two, three, four, or five. Let's go back, check all of them pretty quick. Yeah, I think we're done on that side for now. Swap our tension back. Nothing on one. Okay, two is binding. Got to click out of two. Got to click out of three. Nothing on four or five. One two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we're done on that side for now. Nice click out of one. Nice click on two. Nothing on three, four, or five. Nothing on one, two, 
Okay, I think we're done on that side for now. Swap it back once again. I know it's strange seeing me go back and forth, but I promise you this is the faster way for me. Using lighter tension and a single tension wrench usually takes me longer. Okay, two might be binding, let's see. Yep, gotta click out of two. Nothing on three, four, or five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we're done with that side. As you can see, this lock has fairly good tolerances. Even with my heavy tension, I am really not forcing the binding order at all. Okay, click out of one. Click out of two. And it looks like we just opened it up. Okay, let's take this apart and I will show you the really clever 10 lever core inside of here. Looks like we have Phillips screws down there and let's get an extension on here so I can reach them. They look pretty rusty. go. That came out surprisingly easy given the amount of rust I've in there. Okay, here is the core. I'm gonna start by looking at the back of it with the actuator. You can see this is what actuates the ball bearings. When it is in this position, it's locked. In this position, it's unlocked. Then we have this thick rubber O-ring in here. That actually drags on the inside of the lock body. It dampens a lot of feedback and makes picking these very, very difficult. Then we have the fence here and it actually operates a lot like a sidebar rather than a fence. You can see it fits into our levers there, and once that drops down into the, the gates of the levers, it allows this entire mechanism to turn. Let me get the key, and you can watch those levers line up. Wow, they don't line up particularly well which means this key and or lock is really worn out. But once they're in that position, you can see that that will drop down. There we go. It'll drop down into the gates and allow that to turn. So a really interesting mechanism. Frankly, as far as ingenuity goes, it's one of my favorites. I just love watching this thing operate. It would probably be a little bit more secure if they had some false gates in there, which this does not have. And even the modern version of this doesn't have false gates. That would be a great addition if they did add it. But even the way it is, it is a really nice lock. So that's all I have for you today on this miracle lock with the Ingersoll 10 lever core. If you have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe and have a great Memorial Day. Bye-bye.